everyone, I'm Shivali and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing well. For today's video, I'm going to be showing you five weird tricks of the human body that you might not know about. Um, while I've been stuck in lockdown, I've been doing a lot of scrolling on TikTok and spotted a few of these on there. Um, and then I've done a bit of research afterwards and found loads of weird tricks that I didn't know about and hopefully you didn't either. So I hope you enjoy them. Um, if you do, please leave me a comment, a like um, beneath this video and please do subscribe. So for the first video, all it involves is your hands and it's two simple movements. So your left hand is gonna do a thumbs up and your right hand is gonna do a point. Then you're gonna swap them over. So right hand's gonna do a thumbs up and the left hand's gonna point. So that sounds really straightforward, but when you come to flipping between the two, it's weirdly difficult. So I've been practicing quite a lot this morning, so you can see it's not too hard, but give it a go yourself and you'll find it really, tricky to kind of coordinate swapping between the two. So let's slow it down a bit. It's gonna start, yeah, left hand thumbs up, right hand point at it. Um, so that's the first movement. It's completely separately, try the opposite. So right thumb up and point at it with the left finger. Then slowly pull your finger in and your thumb down and then push out your thumb and your finger and that'll help you get between the two. Again, pull that in your finger, down your thumb, and then up. So you should be able to start flicking between the two. Now, the reason that this is so hard is that in your brain, when you're performing a task, um, different parts of your brain are working together to complete that task. So if the two different tasks are completely separate, that's fine, because it involves different areas of the brain. But when both of the tasks are relatively similar, they use the same parts of the brain and your brain becomes a bit overloaded trying to complete the two separate tasks at once. But with time, you'll find you, you get it and it suddenly clicks and you're like, this is so simple. And that's because your brain starts to put them together into one task rather than two separate tasks. So it's a little bit like, when you, I know when I was younger, we used to do at school the, can you pat your tummy and rub your head? Can you rub your head and pat your tummy? And that's exactly the same, where two separate tasks seem completely difficult to do, and then suddenly it clicks and it's really simple. So yeah, first one is a simple hand movement that yeah, looks simple, but harder than it seems. Okay, so following on from that first trick, which involved your hands, this next trick involves your eyes. So all you're gonna do for it is look from left to right across the room and back again, keeping your head facing forwards. So left to right across the room and right to left back again. Now, you might think that that seems like a pretty smooth movement, but if you film yourself doing that, you'll notice it's that your eyes don't move in a smooth way. Instead, they move in little jerks. However, if you put your finger in front of you and follow your finger across the room, left to right and right to left, your eyes actually do move smoothly. So the reason for this is that our eyes move in what are called saccades. You might not feel it, but they're little jerks so unless you've got something specific to follow, your eyes actually move in little jerks across the room and your brain can then piece together those small jerks into what seems like a smooth movement. Now, when you've got a finger to follow, this is what's known as smooth pursuit and your eyes have a fixed thing to fo focus on um, and move smoothly across the room. Now, the only other time you actually have smooth eye movement is if you keep your eyes facing forwards and then move your head left to right. So you'll notice as I'm doing that, my eyes are smoothly moving. And that's actually what's called a uh, vestibule ocular reflex. And it ensures that when your head's moving, you're not suddenly getting jolting, jolting eye movements. So yeah, a really simple one, but once you've noticed it, it's really hard to unnotice. So if you've ever watched someone else on the train or anything looking out the window, their eyes completely flicker, and that's because there's nothing to focus on, um, rather than keeping a smooth movement. So the next trick is often called the floating arm trick. And what you're gonna need to do for this one is stand in a doorway and gently press the backs of your hands against the door frame. So you're gonna stand like that for a minute. Don't push so hard that it's really hurting your arms, but you do want a bit of tension against the door frame. 
So yeah, you're gonna stand like this for a minute um, and you'll find that when you step away from the door frame, your arms are gonna feel like they're floating. So without having to pull your arms up or anything, when you let your arms relax, you'll find that they slowly feel like they're floating upwards. Now, if you try and go against these feelings and pull them in, you can do, you, you can go against it, but you will feel like something soft is holding you back. Now, the reason for this is a phenomenon called the constant phenomenon. So when you come away from the doorframe, your brain sends um, involuntary orders to your, to your arms to, to contract and pull upwards. Now, when you try and keep your arms, arms down, you, you find like you can, and that's because your brain doesn't order your arms to extend and instead blocks the order to contract the muscles so you can keep them down. But your brain wants you to put your arms up and it feels like you're floating. Very simple one, but yeah, again, really bizarre that you can't really control these things. And uh, quite a good party trick if you ever want to show your friends. So the next trick is something that you may have noticed before, but you may not know why. And that is why when you breathe out um, with your mouth in different shapes, it feels warm sometimes and cold other times. So first of all, you're gonna blow out with your lips pursed. So as if you're saying, so put your hands in front of your mouth and breathe out. Now that air feels fairly cool, doesn't it? But if you breathe out and say, as if you're like checking your breath or something into your hand, that air feels warm. That, which is bizarre, isn't it? Like how your mouth shape affects. So cold, hot. Now, the reason for this is the fact that when you have pursed lips, you create a fast moving jet of air. So when that air then comes out of your mouth and hits the air around it, it creates some turbulence with that air, um, drawing in some of the outer colder air and meaning the jet from your mouth becomes colder before it hits your hand. Now, when you do a sound instead, um, the air coming out of your mouth is moving much slower. So this means that when it hits the air outside of your mouth, it creates much less turbulence, drawing in less air from the outside and meaning that what, by the time the air hits your hand, it's still fairly warm from being in your body. So yeah, a really simple one, but when you actually think about it, bizarre. So the final trick is what I'm calling the impossible leap and is quite a good fun one if you want to play a trick on one of your friends. So for this one, you're going to need to stand up and bend over and hold onto your toes. Now, first you're gonna try and jump backwards in that position, and you'll find you could happily jump across the room backwards. It's a really easy movement. Now, try and jump forwards in that position, and you'll find it's actually impossible. You either topple over or you get stuck where you are. Now, the reason for this is that when we jump, we change our center of gravity. So if you're not holding your toes normally and you jump, um, your body would go forwards, you jump, and then your feet would follow to make sure you're balanced when you land. Now, when you're holding your toes and you try and jump backwards, your heels can move to re realign your body and make sure you're balanced. But if you try and jump forwards, you're already holding onto your toes, so there's nothing in front of you to move and help you to rebalance. So you topple over or you can't move. So yeah, that's why it's called the impossible leap. Um, and it's a good way to show how your center of gravity is so important to how you can move and how you balance. So those are the five weird body quirks that I was gonna show you today um, that I didn't know about and you may not either. Um, I hope you enjoyed them. They're quite fun to try out, quite fun to sh uh, show your friends. Um, so if you do try them, then please tag me in your videos and pictures on social media. I'll leave all my um, handles in the description below. But yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed that. If you'd like to see any more, there are so many other ones that I saw and was baffled by. Um, so please do let me know. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.